The big mistakes people are making with magnesium supplements. Magnesium supplements are very popular for improving sleep and relaxation, calming down muscle cramps especially in the legs at night and for lowering blood pressure, skipped heartbeats and many other issues. However, if you don't know exactly how to use these supplements, you could be wasting your money. In this video, I wanted to talk about the common magnesium mistakes and how to use this mineral properly. Mistake number one is using the wrong form of magnesium. There are many different types of magnesium supplements on the market, some of which are very poorly absorbed. If you check the backs of the labels, the most common form is magnesium oxide which is very very cheap, but sadly only 4% of the magnesium is absorbed by the body, making it a very poor choice. Instead, you'd want to start choosing the right type for your specific needs. For example, magnesium glycinate has an absorption rate of around 80% and is excellent for reducing anxiety, cramps or skipped beats or heart arrhythmias. Whereas magnesium L3 and 8 can cross the blood-brain barrier and is better to use for brain health and improved cognitive function. Magnesium citrate powder is very cheap and helps to relieve constipation, whilst magnesium taurate is also good for the heart and lowering blood pressure. Later in the video, I'll give you a full list of the magnesium types. Mistake number two is taking the wrong dose. Some magnesium supplements come in doses that are too low to be effective. You need to be getting at least 310 to 425 milligrams of elemental magnesium per day for adults to have an effect. However, many people who have specific health problems or severe deficiencies may need more than the RDA. For example, if you have inflammation in your gut, indigestion, bloating or heartburn, or if you're a diabetic, your body may struggle to absorb magnesium properly. In these cases, you'd need a much higher dose between 800 to 1600 of magnesium spread out through the day to raise your magnesium stores. If you do start checking the labels, you'll find many over-the-counter supplements have levels that are far below the required amounts of elemental magnesium. Which also ties in with mistake number three in expecting immediate results. In some cases, magnesium can work very, very quickly. For example, if you're easing a muscle cramp, a twitching muscle caused by an overactive nerve, it works fast. But over 60% of people are chronically deficient in magnesium because we simply don't consume enough vegetables. So it can actually take at least three months to fix the underlying problems and correct the biochemistry of the body and build up the magnesium levels inside the cells rather than just the blood. The fourth mistake is relying on blood tests. Many doctors make the mistake of testing your blood to check your magnesium levels. However, only 1% of your magnesium is actually stored in your blood as 99% of it is stored inside your bones and your cells. So blood tests do not give an accurate result, making it a pointless exercise in my opinion. It's much better to check for the symptoms of a magnesium deficiency, such as anxiety, twitching muscles, cramps, high blood pressure and others. You may want to watch my video 12 signs your body needs more magnesium to find out if you may need it. And then we have mistake number five, missing the key cofactors. Now, in order to absorb and activate magnesium from a supplement, your body needs vitamin D. It is best to take at least 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily as a maintenance dose or to expose your skin to sunlight for 40 minutes a day. Vitamin D helps your body absorb the magnesium from foods and supplements. Vitamin B6 also helps magnesium be transported into your cells as well. And you can get that quite easily by eating some salmon, nutritional yeast flakes or other fish. You also need to be hydrated by drinking enough water so that your body can transport the magnesium to your muscles and nerves. Eating too many processed foods is also a big mistake. 
Phytic acid found in whole grains can actually bind to minerals like magnesium, iron, zinc and others, making them unavailable to be absorbed by your body. Unfortunately, refined grains, sugars and vegetable seed oils can all deplete your magnesium levels very, very quickly. Because they're refined, more magnesium is required to help metabolise these processed foods into energy. So it's advisable to limit your intake of processed foods and focus on eating meat, vegetables, fish, nuts and whole foods as this will allow your body to store and hold on to more magnesium. Another mistake is consuming too much caffeine, soda or alcohol. Caffeine raises your cortisol levels, causing you to feel more anxious and require more magnesium for relaxation. So drinking too much coffee or tea could be lowering your magnesium reserves. Alcoholic drinks also interfere with magnesium absorption in the gut and overwork your kidneys, causing more magnesium to be lost through the urine. And soda drinks also have a lot of phosphoric acid, which is used as a preservative and to give you that pleasant sensation that's in the back of your mouth when you drink it. But drinking too much phosphorus disrupts the balance of calcium and magnesium in your body, leading to problems like bone loss, stiff arteries, high blood pressure and muscle cramps. As a side note, carbonated water is absolutely fine and does not usually have phosphoric acid. It's only the soda drinks, both diet and regular, that you don't want to overdo. Mistake number eight is ignoring dietary magnesium. Now supplements are an amazing way to boost your magnesium levels, but you should still try to get as much of it as possible from food-based sources. Magnesium ions are found at the heart of chlorophyll, which is the green pigment in plants. So you want to include lots of leafy greens in your diet. Pumpkin seeds are also a good source, as well as wild salmon. So moving on to mistake number nine, ignoring your gut health. If you're a person who has digestive issues like IBS, IBD, or leaky gut, or you have a history of taking antibiotics or medications for acid reflux, it's possible that your body struggles to absorb the magnesium and other nutrients fully. Lactobacillus plantarum and Bifidobacterium bifidum are particularly helpful for improving nutrient uptake. All you need to do is start eating more of these friendly bacterial strains from high quality fermented vegetables like kimchi, sauerkraut or other types of fermented cabbage. Lactobacillus acidophilus and Lactobacillus rhamnosus also majorly support gut health and magnesium absorption, so consider adding probiotic rich foods like kefir or yogurt with live cultures into your diet. These majorly help to heal and reseal your gut lining to restore your gut health, lower inflammation and help you absorb magnesium. Mistake number 10 is bad timing of your supplements. Depending on what your goal is, magnesium supplements should be taken at different times during the day. For generally just raising up your magnesium levels and supporting your muscles and nerves, spread your doses out throughout the day. For sleep and relaxation, just take it two hours before you go to bed. For brain and cognitive improvement, you may want to take it in the morning and the early afternoon, as I do. And for improving digestion, magnesium citrate should be taken after a meal. I would avoid taking your magnesium though when you're eating high phytate foods like whole grains and legumes as it will block the supplement from being absorbed. Mistake number 11 is over fasting. If you like to do intermittent fasting for health purposes, you should be aware that this can deplete magnesium levels. It is suggested to supplement with magnesium, potassium citrate and sea salt to keep your electrolyte levels high whilst you're fasting. These will help to maintain the normal charge in your mitochondria to keep your energy levels high, especially in the cells of your heart. If you fast too much and too often and find that you get heart palpitations, twitches or cramps, you need to stop over fasting and be a little bit more gradual in your approach. And mistake number 12 is drinking desalinated water. 
Groundwater naturally contains magnesium salts, which are important for heart health and muscular function. But in some countries like the US and parts of the Middle East, desalinated water is used instead of groundwater. Unfortunately, this process removes magnesium and other trace minerals from the water, leaving people more likely to become deficient. Studies show that communities that are relying on desalinated water have higher rates of heart problems and longer hospital stays, especially during illnesses due to the lack of magnesium. In the UK, however, most of the water that we have comes from groundwater or reservoirs which do have small amounts of magnesium. However, if your diet is low in magnesium-rich foods, you may still need to supplement to meet your needs. So what are the different types of magnesium supplements and what are they best for? Magnesium glycinate is the best for relaxation, sleep and calming nerves with excellent absorption at over 80%. Magnesium L3 and 8 is best for brain health, improving memory, focus and cognitive function. Magnesium citrate is best for bowel movements and relieving constipation and it can also help with mild muscle cramps. Magnesium malate is best for energy production and reducing chronic pain, like fibromyalgia. Magnesium taurate is also very good for the heart and controlling blood sugar levels. It also supports muscle recovery. Magnesium orotate is best for cellular repair and cardiovascular health, excellent for athletes. Magnesium chloride is best for generally raising magnesium levels, but it's also very good at reducing acid reflux. And magnesium sulfate, otherwise known as Epsom salts, is used externally in bath water to relax muscles and detoxify the skin. Side effects. Generally speaking, magnesium supplements rarely cause any side effects. Since it's one of the most important minerals needed by the human body, it either gets used or dumped out through your waste if you take too much. However, if you have some type of kidney damage, taking a large amount of poor quality magnesium, like oxide, carbonate or hydroxide, may cause you to have a bit too much magnesium in your blood and this can trigger nausea, vomiting, low blood pressure, confusion and heart arrhythmias. Again, this is extremely rare, especially if you're taking good quality supplements. I'd also like to share with you some of the common signs of a magnesium deficiency and why you may want to start using a supplement. Muscle twitches can happen when you have high calcium but low magnesium, which is overexciting the nerves. Heart palpitations and irregular heartbeats flutters or skipped beats is very common. Constipation or difficulty passing stools is a symptom of low magnesium. Anxiety and irritability happens because there isn't enough magnesium to relax your nerves. Another sign is high blood pressure, which is very common in people with a magnesium deficiency because the blood vessels become tight and restricted. Sleep disturbances, like waking up in the night with racing thoughts, is very common with high cortisol and low magnesium. Chocolate cravings are extremely common, and bones may also become weaker because magnesium works with calcium and vitamin D to strengthen them. If you'd like more information on identifying a magnesium deficiency, watch my previous video that's on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you great health, wealth, and happiness.